So I want to show you something really cool. Um, I haven't talked about this much outside of our group. Um, and the details of this I usually just talk about with senior men, uh, members, senior clients. The image you're seeing on the screen right now, I want you to imagine that it resembles a musical chord. So we have a series of musical notes could be two notes upwards. In this case, we're just using the visualization of four. And we could also view this as sort of like objects of mass that are moving around dynamically in the moments and they have different relations to each other. But just for our purpose, let's think of it mainly as a musical chord. Each note in the chord is unique and distinct, has its own qualities and it's forming relationships with the other musical notes in the chord. And we'll just say that the chord is the collection of the circles representing the musical notes. Now, we can take this a step further and say each circle could represent an archetypal field of energy. Uh, you know, we could conceptualize this as, say, like a role dynamic, like R-O-L-E, like a dynamic of roles that are taking place in our life as we interact and engage the moment. But what's interesting about this visualization is that it can be used to better understand how the confluence of stellar energies, archetypal field energies, are moving, how they're relating, how they may be affecting us. It kind of gives us like a, a description of the scene that's in the play. So. When we take a look at this dynamic and we actually take a look at, say, how are we going to chart this, this kind of energy um, across time and space? How are we going to chart this across time and space? The first thing that we want to do is we want to determine what's the nature of our focus. So we know that there is a future coming up, short term, long term. You know. If I want to achieve something, if I want to experience something, what's the chance of it happening or turning out well? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out what category that desire or objective fits into. Um, and the way that we do that with a proper, more scientific you know, approach to astrology is we adapt the houses, the concept of houses in astrology, but we kind of make them practical in the sense that we take a look at what are the very specific interests and associations of a house to an area in our life. We know that there's 12 houses. Each house designates a different role or type of experience in our lives. So third house would be an indication, for instance, of travel, um, short trips. If, you, if you're doing a commute, if you have to say drive to work and back every day, um, if you're engaged with any kind of like communicative transactions, how well will they go or will they not? So what, what we do then is we take a look at mapping those kinds of energies as a bar graph and then trying to figure out on what date uh, and explicit time do certain patterns form. So in this particular case, we're saying that a red declination shows a hazardous time. Anything that's in red would tend to be a difficult time to travel or engage in trips. We also take a look at things like the surface area. When we take a look at these kinds of graphs, and we're, we'll view um, a quality of your life through different kinds of graphs. We take a look at the heights. So this gives us an intensity strength indication. And then we take a look at the surface area. You know, how long lasting is that? So from a very quick glance, we see that this graph tells us which times are best for travel and short trips. Uh, here's one for ninth house, and that the association is the ninth house for the person is long distance travel, legal issues, you know, interacting with authorities, studies, basically anything of a higher mind. So we can quickly identify the trouble spots. So I'm going to come back to this in a bit, but the real purpose of this one is we want to take a look at the nature of maps. So there's different ways that we can view uh, what you're going to be like over a certain point uh, in time and space, but nobody can be all places all at the same time. 
and you don't always have um, direct control over where you're going to be. Sometimes you might be, especially with the way the world is right now, it might be challenging to change your location, even if that um, current location that you're in is somewhat hazardous. However, even if that's the case, what can often occur is that if you have the ability to make interactions with places that are even at a far distance, even if it's remotely, it can sometimes work out to your benefit. So a really simple example, if you're working remotely and you can work with clients all over the world, invariably what you'll find is that at some point in time and space, you'll tend to do better financially in some places than others. Not just financially, but other qualities of your life. Like, for example, you know, your true friends, like who your true uh, tribe is, the people that you would be happiest with and identify with, can be found, can actually be uh, located using this method, at least with a very high degree of probability. And what's interesting is that at Sound of Stars, what we try to do is we try to offer like kind of like a strategic and tactical approach uh, to understanding you know, who you are, uh, where you need to be, what you need to be you know, focused on, uh, the kind of people you should be interacting with. So essentially building the coherence of your own you know, vital you know, experience of being each day, becoming a better, stronger version of yourself in a hands-on way. But the reason that I'm, I'm trying to accentuate this is that um, there's going to be a part of your fulfillment um, that will be linked often to geographically distant places. Uh, a mentor of mine once said that um, it's uncanny when you visit you know, what's essentially one of your power spots. If you're there for at least 30 days, something tends to click. You know, something tends to come awake that you hadn't really experienced as a sense of self before. Uh, and I know that there is some truth in that because having traveled a fair bit and you know, had the opportunity to experience that, uh, I can say that that's the way it was for me. Which is some places just resonate with you better than others. But what we do is we take a look at how does a person discover where, the, you know, where they have a natural... Um, you know, affinity to where will they just tend to, you know, be you know happier, luckier, more fulfilled. But also, what are the dynamic cycles that go into and out of those places? So, there's different levels that we go into this. Uh, we have like basic sort of entry levels, which gives a more of a generalized perspective where you have data that you you can track down. You know, parts essentially of your self fulfillment. Uh, certainly, if you're trying to like market a you know a service or product, you know your best customers would always tend to be at certain places at certain times and would be the most responsive to you. But we go up from the basic to an executive level as well, and that's that's a, a service that is cultivated by our you know more senior, um, you know more more privileged customers in the sense that they've contributed a lot to our growth and we've you know, delivered you know, goods and services to them that uh, they found very satisfying. And so there was a mutual gratitude there. Um, so when we talk about a, more of an executive level of mapping, that would be like a deep dive into the fine resolution of things like the least aspected planets. We'll talk about that a little bit more possibly in this video and maybe in an upcoming video. But let's take a look at how some of these map tools would basically work. Um, we would have actual uh, special models that we would use. We can target essentially the whole planet and take a focus on the kinds of, you know, or the parts of your life that are associated with different houses. And then we can get like a dynamic snapshot of the energy distribution in different areas. So in this particular case, one of the tools that we're using is uh, letting us model the planet and it's seeking for an energy dispersion uh, uh, like distribution pattern associated with the interests of the client. So the client has said, listen, here's a part of my life I want to experience in a happier, more full you know, way. Um, in this moment, where would I go? Where would I go seeking? Where would I go find this? 
So in this particular case, we did a scan across the planet, found a generalized energy distribution <coughs> on the different continents. Uh, in these particular maps, when it's a lighter color, green, blue, the energy is not as strong. When we see an energy distribution pattern that's uh, dark red, dark pink, or you know shades of that, that's more intense. So if we take a look at North America versus Australia for this client in this moment, the interest here was on uh, financial um, compensation. So client wants to know if they expend energy, time, and effort, where will they be rewarded the most? So that we see that, that for this point in time, there's a low return um, in North America, but there's you know a more intense return in Australia, and specifically this region. And then continuing on, we see across Europe that we have, a, again, an energy distribution pattern showing where the shades are the darkest, where the best and you know, most probable outcomes of you know being financially compensated for a transaction is. Um, now I wanted to also talk about overlaying the astrology tools that we use uh, with some other things. Um, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between astrology and other kinds of um, bodies of expertise. And the reason that I'm going back and forth is I want to demonstrate in your mind how different methods act as a template and how you can superimpose patterns from one method to the other. And that's really one of the important takeaways uh, that I want to... I don't just want to be in a situation where I'm providing you data where you can have greater intelligence about assessing and managing a situation. Certainly that's important. That's generally the nature of what I do insofar as offering the service. But I, I also do my best to try to cultivate an interest on the part of the client to understand and synthesize these dynamics um, you know, to as high a level as they can because you become able to better manage the information then if you can synthesize. For instance, we're looking at, this is a type of template. I'm looking at an astrological energy distribution for a moment in time and space. This is like a 24-hour span. Um, but then I might go to completely other templates where I'm getting an awareness of what's happening in the environment from a completely different perspective from astrology, and then what I want to do is I want to compare the two. And sometimes what I'll find is a remarkable overlap between two completely different methods of something important going on in a certain region, and then flipping from one perspective to the other. I'm just going to give you a few examples of that. Um, this is uh, an excellent... Uh, I don't know if I agree with everything this, this fellow is saying. Uh, this is um, a snapshot from Suspicious Observers. Um, and these are some, I believe these are speculated maps about what he sees as kind of long term, um, you know, dynamics happening in the environment. And so, I mean, some of these are pretty out there claims, but, you know, he, he does an interesting job on his YouTube channel. Some of the, you know, conjecture that he engages in, I think, is reasonable. Um, so this is an example of, a, say, a completely different template that we would compare um, against, you know, an astrological uh, method. And keeping in mind that we can see long-term uh, effects and influences from an astrological perspective, so not just a short window of time. When I'm looking at, you know, these simplified kind of like uh, targeted maps of a special interest, these are... These are all short duration windows, so these will change. The energy distribution will change dynamically over short periods of time. Um, but we can actually take a look at uh, a friend of mine who I hope to be bringing on board more um, in SOS Pursuits, and we've partnered on a couple of interesting projects in the past. But this is what's referred to as a geodata astrocartography map. Uh, and what we see here are the current planetary lines of, um, of distribution across the entire planet. We can zoom in and we can associate different kinds of qualities to each of these colored lines. Each of these colored lines represents planetary influence and 
these change over time. But sometimes we can find some pretty interesting um, manifestations occurring where lines cross. So here, for instance, this is Pluto, Midheaven, and this is Uranus Ascendant. So you have a, a crossing of the Pluto-Uranus line at this point in time. Um, that's going to have a pretty interesting manifestation. So these are other kinds of maps that I might superimpose. Uh, and then the other thing that we would look at is what, one of the things that we, we encourage clients to do is um, use a variety of environmental assessment tools to compare and contrast against their astrology data. So on the premium service that we offer for clients, here's an example of a page constructed that was meant as kind of like a comprehensive heads up view as to what's going on in the planet currently, uh, in some cases with forecasted data. So we've basically just embedded a number of really um, meaningful, helpful tools and that lets us get in really quick and check out, say, any given region. You know, if we want to take a look at what's like happening, you know, in North America, for instance, you know, where is there stress occurring? Uh, compare that with some of the other, you know, heads up displays, different kinds of, you know, data displays. Compare things like, you know, the lunar calendar, you know, what's the moon doing? Uh, taking a look at, you know, outer atmosphere disturbances, what's what kind of, you know, radiation is coming in and hitting the planet, uh, and different ways of viewing that, you know, um, taking a look at, you know, what's happening with solar flare probability, you know, getting a heads up on, you know, where are we at in the solar cycle. Uh, this is a great app here as well. It's not loading, I'm not sure why, but usually what we have is like a, a pretty awesome venture sky. It's a pretty awesome wind distribution across any given region, so you can see forces of wind. So basically just comparing different kinds of panels, you know, like what sort of tsunami warnings, you know, are in place. Taking a look at, you know, what's happening with active volcanoes. Also recommending things like air quality index um, access. So just, you know, whatever the region is that you happen to be living in, you know, getting kind of an idea as to what's happening with pollution globally. Um, when we compare something like this, like an actual air quality index page to what's going on astrologically, sometimes we'll see some pretty interesting correspondences occur. And that's that's really a huge plus. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of forest fires here in Canada and we were trying to keep track of, you know, where are we going to see the worst, um, you know, the wor worst income of smoke. Here's a dynamic example of where we can see correspondence uh, between an air quality index map real time and then the current geodetics. So we're taking a look at this region um, in the Middle East. And you can see that here we have the Uranus is on the Midheaven. It's crossing Saturn on the descendant. And then right over to the right, we have Mars on the ascendant. <clears throat> so in between Uranus and Mars, and these lines usually have a distance of planetary influence. But one of the ways that we, we look for uh, acute manifestation is taking a look at where there's tight parallel lines um, and then trying to interpret what a, you know, kind of like a, an interstitial, uh, where, the, where the boundaries of those two planetary force lines meet, what would the blending of those two energies likely result in, or the crossing of them? But when we go to the, and this, usually you would associate, you know, Uranus and Mars uh, in, you know, in that tight um, a proximity, and then crossing with things like Saturn in the background to be fairly explosive energy. Uh, and then when we take a look at the air quality ind index, interestingly, they're having a real problem uh, with the quality of their air, and much of the the spikes of um, much of the spikes of the bad uh, air uh, quality correspond positionally with these lines. Certainly happening in between them. Uh, that's super interesting. Now, there's different ways of looking at the globe. We have different kinds of astrocartography tools. 
um, and really ones that are scalable where you can zoom out and try to find you know what the best patterns are on the planet understand that there's different layers of these kinds of maps right now we're looking at the actual uh, lines in the sky but we could be in situations where we're wanting to work with something uh, that shows our natal uh, lines as well so for example we might view the map by turning on the actual current planets so we can see where those lines of force are actually in the sky right now because where those lines run will be the greatest manifestation of the qualities of that archetypal field so in this case Jupiter is very close to places like uh, St. Louis um, however we can also take a look at um, a different layer of this different kind of template and that would be the natal lines so what you were born with now notice how there is two sets of lines and many of them converge so here's the natal lines they're separate and then here's the geodetic lines and the important thing to look for is where again these lines intersect and you know what the static or fixed planetary lines will be like in relation to the dynamic or transient lines that are changing because what that means is you have um, a different expression of those qualities over time the way that you benefit from this information is that if you're looking to interact with a remote distance or if you're looking to change your location you can usually get a feel for the kind of qualities the experience will be like at that space so for example here we've got a crossing of Venus and uh, Pluto so there's the natal uh, Venus uh, the transiting Venus and then the Pluto line so that's a very intense uh, that's probably really intense sexuality uh, so for that particular person at that point in time uh, that would be a uh, pretty intense place to be but you would use this essentially for uh, trying to find you know opportunities and avoid hazard you know in a particular situation like that I, if you were trying to get work done or business done uh, that wouldn't be the best place to do it unless it was something that was like deeply creative and uh, transformative so that's one of the ways that we use mapping to try to find out where are current danger points you know what kind of areas should I uh, gravitate towards uh, to have the best experience um, where should I avoid something as practical as just planning long-distance travel um, by combining both maps and the graphs of the energy flow we can get a much better handle on making decisions so as an example um, here's the state of energy in the ninth house for a certain person over a period of time and this is specifically related to long distance travel so we can see that these green areas have a lot of duration um, because they have a lot of surface area they cover a fair bit of time and the greater the volume of that surface area the stronger the influence and they have height so these would be good times to go traveling however the red times uh, some of them are significant especially this one and this one so realistically the person shouldn't be traveling around them but what we can do is we can take a look at what's actually going on uh, on a part of the planet that a person may want to go to and then see if that energy in the actual location is intrinsically hazardous in and of itself um, or if it's not and certainly if it had a hazardous collective influence and the person had a likely rough time you know personally so there's likely to be more turbulence probably they shouldn't be traveling during those red times to places that are you know indicating you know something dangerous so if we're taking a look at say a very specific city and we see the distance of influence from the epicenter outwards what kinds of influences are going on here well we've got Mars uh, very close to a couple of cities so probably that wouldn't be the best place to go to uh, during those volatile times
this implies that there's going to be a cycle that you'll experience in your immediate location. And that will be something that will be timed personally, specifically for you. Like a personal trend. What can you expect as a personal trend in your current location over time? And obviously, if we graph this data out and we know about it in advance, this helps us do things like, again, minimize risk, you know, take advantage of opportunity. It lets us know when to take rest, you know, take action. So if we're looking at a financial, you know, peak flow over a span of time, we know, well, we shouldn't be expensing too much during a time where there's a plateau or there's no, you know, uh, presence of financial funding. If financial funding is coming in, then we might want to plan our affairs to make acquisitions, you know, to get a job done, say, during on the uptick of a cycle. So when we're taking a look um, at the different qualities of life, we might organize them um, by qualitative labels. Um, these are essentially, again, both house correspondences as well as planetary um, aspects. So we're looking at aspects, if you recall, very similar, again, to the musical chord. So a series of individual planets are relating to each other over a period of time, and they're affecting you, and we are associating those planetary musical chords with different kinds of qualities. So you'd have a chord similar to this that would be associated to business success. So we would know that there was a number of musical chords which are attributed to success occurring in the person's life over a period of time, and then we're graphing that energy as a bar graph. And the reason this is helpful, of course, is uh, not least of which um, a time management optimization perspective. So being in the situation where you have advanced knowledge of how a certain aspect of your life is likely to flow over a period of time, and that means that you're probably going to get a better return if you put your focus and effort into a certain activity that's congruent with the energy that's in an optimal state. So that, you know, just as an example, um, and it might sound cold and clinical, uh, but really I've seen it, um, I mean, you're just so far ahead of the game on average, it just makes sense to use this as a tool, uh, and you just, you just get a better return. So as an example, um, So as an example, when I'm looking at uh, a period of a few months and I can see that, you know, the friendship and family score is fairly low. So I'm not going to have, I'm probably in a situation where I'm not going to have a lot of contact or people are just busy doing their things. When I look at the, the X axis, we see the timeline. When I look at the Y axis, I see the rank magnitude. So in this case, rank magnitude just means what's the strength of the influence or how probable is it that that quality is going to be at the forefront and going well. Usually, in my experience, around the five is just very average. It's like it's okay, nothing spectacular, nothing great. If it's below a five, it starts just becoming a fairly weak influence. So probably there's not much going on in that area of life. If it gets above a five and it starts pulling up, to a 10, it's going to be there. Um, experience you know, has indicated that that's usually fairly present and strong. Uh, when it gets above a 10, then it's quite noticeable. So what I do then is I take a look at this block of time holistically, and I just realize that the likelihood of me putting energy into, say, interacting with friendship and family, is, it's just not going to, there's not much going on there anyway. Um, I might see that, for instance, across the timeline, there's an area of accident proneness here. And so uh, what I want to know in advance is what do I have to be engaged with during that time and slightly before and slightly after? Can I take a break then? If I'm going to be you know, more prone to things going, I'm probably going to be more stressed then. Um, I'm probably not going to be you know, feeling physically well. My energy might be low. And so, you know, I know basically to take that maybe as a rest period. You know, don't try to um, do much there. Uh, if I'm going to try to get in shape or better shape, 
um, my athletic performance, anything requiring physical stress, you know, physical exertion, it's served in these clusters and these peaks. And so what that tells me is that, that, you know, if I've got yard work to do or there's some kind of physical action I've got to take, probably it's going to go well then. But really, the reason for showing all these different um, graphs is to kind of give a sense of um, how you can take a look at a certain part of your life over a period of time and determine, you know, what course of action you should take in regards to a certain focus. <clears throat> when, when we're graphing um, important events in your life, though, uh, we're not just taking a look at the visual image. Uh, there's also, you know, what I do is I provide for clients um, a detailed text report uh, that covers, you know, all of the critical areas. So, for instance, when we're charting, uh, you know, what a specific interest is over time, and we see good dates and we see potentially challenging dates, we're not just representing it visually. So, I mean, obviously it's helpful if you can look at a graph, you know, and just, you know, very quickly determined, you know, when are you going to be on, when are you going to be off, you know, when will you be doing well, when are you likely going to be experiencing challenge, uh, and, and specifically, when would you experience challenge on, a, you know, uh, like a, a certain subject. So if we're looking here at finances, or we're looking here at, you know, what's the quality of our relationship with a group or with, you know, an individual, you know, what kind of expectations do we have for a certain desire over time, and we see that there's a huge dip here. We don't just want to have a visual cue so we know basically when it's happening and how bad it might be, um, but we want to know what it's about. And so what I provide for clients is full detailed text reports. So what that would mean is you, you go to the graph itself, you find the, the dates that are of interest to you, and then we provide a means that you can easily look that up and go right into a text report. So here we see, you know, for instance, right around July 27th, this is a problematic time. There's some kind of stress occurring there. So in that given report, you would say, pull up the text entry, the detailed text entry, and it tells you exactly, you know, in most cases, it, it doesn't just tell you what's going on, where can you expect the stress to come from, what form is it likely going to take, but in many cases, we detail you know, what the best solutions are. So when you're in that crisis situation, you know, whatever options are likely the best ones, you know, what do those options look like? Uh, also, what could be problematic? What, what are the kinds of choices or decisions, you know, that you want to stay away from? And that's um, one of the biggest benefits from this process because understand that whenever you have um, intense moments, like, Right here, we have sort of like a congregation of multiple negative energy spikes. In essence, that's a kind of node or portal. There's, there's, some, there's a big disruption in energy here. And so whenever there's a big disruption in energy, you want to have a recovery time, and you want to make sure you're getting back on the right track. And so the choices that you make and the understanding that you have of the situation can help get you back on track. Now, usually when, when, when people come asking, um, you know, listen, I'd like to know what's probably going to happen in my life, you know, in the future, usually that's coming from business people, uh, you know, people that have their own uh, small shop or they're a professional of some kind. But the same, you know, the, the same basic need is in place. It's like, you know, essentially, who am I? What's going on? You know, What's the nature of the environments that I'm in that I can't see especially? And what's likely coming up? How, how do I basically handle the, you know, the short-term and long-term future? You know, where, where are my best odds? So we provide a number of reports, both individually and kind of collectively. The Vertex is one of my favorite ones because a big thing in Sound of Stars is you know, encouraging each other to determine what their real life purpose is. Chances are, if you have a good idea of what your life purpose is and you're sticking to it, even when things get tough, you're going to be pointed in the right direction. It seems as though when people either are not well informed about what their life purpose is about, actually have a pretty solid understanding of it, 
um, you know, or they start to forget about it, that's when they run into trouble because without that understanding, without that knowledge, it can be really tough to figure out what direction you should be going in. Uh, but there's a number of different reports that we do. Um, we do like a business and finance uh, forecast. Um, we map it in a number of different ways. We have a, a number of different uh, mapping tools that we use. Um, usually when people come to us and they're like the atypical business person wanting to get like a, you know, an idea as to what's going on with them, we, we suggest uh, one particular collection, which is one-year transits, one-year graph of um, transits, but it's uh, condensed and summarized. So we have like an executive class, kind of like sub annual subscription type report where it's very detailed, high resolution. You know, it's, it's really quite good for an executive level decision making. Then we provide like a very summarized, condensed form of that, which outlines, you know, the most important key points of the year and then provides enough detail to kind of get a handle on that. But we generally produce this, you know, as a series of graphs and text reports. I wanted to also just give you an example of what our day charts look like. You'll recall we were talking about using a bar graph over a period of time to see when, you know, basically good dates and bad dates are. So when will there be hazard? You know, when will there be uh, positive things happening? So um, what we would do is we'd use the bar graph to find the date where there was a problem occurring. And then what we would do, depending on how severe that energy looked at that time, and it's also depending on what kind of action the person would have to be engaged in, we might zoom in on the bar graph and then actually illustrate the flow of energy for the day. So here's an example where we're taking a look at a day that's been blown up, zoomed in, and we can see how the energy is flowing for a given concern over that period of time. And the way this works is we have three horizontal layers in the display. And so the top display is the person, so it would be you. This is the, the how you're experiencing the energetic trend in your own life. And then the middle the horizontal is what's happening collectively. Uh, in this particular type of day chart, the green energy represents a positive flow of energy. The red indicates basically chaos, turbulence, um, you know, uh, often some form of stress or you know anxiety. There's something that's not probably going to go right during that time. But what we do when we're using the day chart is we take a look at how is the synchronized energy uh, flowing. <coughs> so if we look at the personal energy and the general energy is one thing, um, what are we seeing happen? Now we can use the bottom uh, row as kind of a general indicator because sometimes basically the, the bottom row it's like a summary of the collective energy with a small merging of the personal. But what we're looking for is where is their overlap? So if, I've, if I had two green bands that were above each other and I, there was something that I was going to, you know, say, take a chance on or expend some energy or some effort on, uh, the likelihood of it working out well would occur where the green bands line up. So where there's a connection between the two because it means that you're on, you're more likely to be on, and then the background collective energy is more likely to support you. However, if you're in a situation where you've got either a red band personally and then, say, a moderate you know, red background, or if you've got, you know, uh, an alignment where there's a fairly solid bar of volatile, chaotic energy in the collective um, at the same time where you're feeling volatile, that's a, usually that's a no-fly zone. So you know in advance, okay, so these dates are hazardous, but now you know the exact time window that that hazard is likely to be present, and then you take precautions. So if this had to do with, you know, you're, you're going to get on a plane and fly 3,000 miles, you know, don't be getting on the plane at this time. Don't be, in, you know, flying at this time. Um, usually what I advocate in most cases is uh, just, you know, rest, uh, be calm, you know, stay grounded. So 
for most people that come to me and they, they say, you know, they just want to have an idea as to what's coming up for them in life and what should they do about it, usually what I, I make a recommendation um, on is get a one-year personal transit. And if you're, especially if you're a professional person or if you're a business person, get the business report. Um, also, uh, I usually recommend getting the Vertex done because the Vertex gives a really good explanation of what your life purpose is supposed to be. Because right now, um, if you're ever going to get things together, you know, it's especially in August 2021, it's the time to do it. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, your ship is tied down and everything is safe in harbor. And you want to have a pretty good idea as to where you're going to be going. Usually it takes me about two to three hours to do like the good basic uh, summarized condensed version of the life and business uh, forecast. Um, so basically what that is is you've got a year's worth of you know graphs and maps that are relevant to your interests um, and then you know a text report. There's other kinds of reports that we do. I don't usually promote these very much. There'll be a bunch of links in the comment section of this video below. So you can, um, you know, check all this stuff out. Uh, yeah, most most of the times when people come to me, it's through word of mouth. Um, I'm making a bit of an extra effort here um, uh, right now because I understand like how important um, this next while is. I'm going to have a limited amount of time, so I probably won't be able to process too many requests. Um, you know, because like everybody, I'm also scrambling to get stuff done. Uh, your best bet is just, you know, you can email me. You can contact me at doc underscore stars at yahoo.com. That's D-O-C underscore S-T-A-R-Z at yahoo.com. If I can get you in, I will. Um, usually the way it works is um, we correspond a little bit. I try to get a handle on where you're at. <clears throat> you know, what are the issues that you're uh, dealing with and then try to get an idea as to what's coming up for you and provide you feedback and input on the kinds of choices that you probably want to make uh, in order to get through um, the future reasonably well. Now, one of the last things I wanted to share with you has to do with a tool that we have that lets us scan the quality, very specific qualities for a person and or place. And so let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, this is really interesting. Uh, I found something, I found a few remarkable things out. Uh, I had a preferred senior client, great person, been with me for a long time, and she requested and commissioned a number of projects. One of which was as a business person, she wanted to take a look at what the next seven years would look like um, as a business cycle. So one of the things that I had to do was determine through the use of a special astrological um, tool set, uh, it's the least aspected planet and the most aspected planet, but to try to use some special uh, principles to find out explicitly what are the best spots on the planet for her, where is she likely going to flourish specifically and so we scanned hundreds of cities across the planet and we narrowed it down. <clears throat> we came up with a short list of the very best cities basically on each continent that she would flourish in for different qualities. But on top of that, we also mapped um, what was happening in that city itself over time. You know, what were the trends or what was the flow? Uh, and so this is just an example. Like I say, we did hundreds of different cities. But you can see here, this is a city in China called Wuhu, and it spans from 2020 to 2026. Um, and there's different ways that we will use this information, but um, before we go to the obvious, I just want to show you something here. Um, if you look at the entire pattern as a whole, so you try to like look at this you know, the collection of red and green blocks as a whole, you, you see that there is kind of like a standing wave or column type pattern forming. And you'll see that here in 2020, 
there's almost like a solid red band, uh, and then there's very little, you know, shades of green in there. It's mostly a red column for much of the year from 2020, and then from 2020 to 21, there's a dispersal or breakup of that, and then it's relatively clear, and we don't really run into anything acute until 2025, 2026. Um, now that's curious uh, for a number of reasons, but what we're doing here is we're taking different kinds of uh, qualities or labels of qualities of what the general um, trend in that community will be. So if, if we were in the community of the city of Wuhu, uh, we would look at any of these qualities and we can view them uh, across one y-axis or one y-axis node across the entire x-axis. And we can see, you know, basically how is that one quality trending. Uh, so that, you know, we track individual qualities and then we'll track like the clusters of qualities. Obviously this is useful for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is if anybody say had to transact or locate or interact with this entity, the city of Wuhu, if you were present in the city of Wuhu, then probably your experience would be very grim during this time. And when there's a lightning of that and it's mostly green, obviously life would be a lot more pleasant there. But it also tells us when should you get in and when should you get out. So if, if a person was, for instance, visiting Wuhu, they would know that it would be right around 2024 that they want to get out of Wuhu. Um, now, this kind of a display, this kind of uh, you know, data set, which we can generate literally for a physical city or place over a span of time and monitor basically you know, what's the pulse of these different qualities in that city. And we can also do this for a person. We can, we can do this for a person in the location. And you'd notice that there would be difference. So if we'd say, say this was the location and the person, then what we would do is we would have a sum total down here. How is this person doing in this location over time? Because the grid or the map showing the qualities of these uh, states for a place over time, this would look different than the person. So right now we're looking at the energy profile for Wuhu. If we looked at the energy profile for an individual person, the grid and the map and the distribution of the red and green patterns would be very different. And so what we would want to do is we would want to know what the energy profile pattern for the person in the place is and then superimpose it on top of that. And that gives us a really superior um, grasp of awareness of location. Um, and certainly it increases a, a person's chance of achieving what they're after. We might want to do comparative analysis. So what if we wanted to know what the financial trends were across a number of Chinese cities? Uh, well, we could actually look at that and get a handle as to when is prosperity occurring and when is it dipping. Um, but we see that there's some pretty interesting dynamics happening in the different cities. Uh, for a number of the cities, they're taking hits around 2025. Uh, that's right around the time of 2024 where that good energy is fading out and you, you know that you'd want to get out of there. Here's an example of another city, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Same time period, same qualities. Um, similar kind of column pattern being set up. Not exactly the same as Wuhu, but we certainly see that the same concentration and densities of those pillar standing wave type formations are roughly in the same place. We see for Vancouver, it's 2026. Um, it looks pretty tough. Um, although we do see between 2021 and 2022, it's not so bad. And then between 2023 and 2024, also not so bad. There's been a larger number of people asking um, just about my forecast services recently. And, um, you know, given the uh, 
stress that the world is under, I thought I should probably say something. Just to wrap it up, though, the, what you basically want to have, uh, best case scenario, is at least the condensed sort of summary year forecast. That forecast, again, consists of like a text description of the greatest challenges and opportunities that you're likely going to have over the year. Then you want that graphed. You want to have like a visual bird's eye view as to what kinds of energy is coming in. You know, what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? When are they occurring? And then cross-referencing that also just with what your inner state is. Um, also reviewing things like the, the vertex. <clears throat> you want to know who you are for sure. You want to be on track. Um, I also usually suggest, and that that's included in the basic, um, you know, one-year condensed summary version of the influence of the place that you live on, that you live in, on you. So the where you're living will exert a certain influence likely on you, and it will change over time. So if you have at least a snapshot of what the framework of the environment is that you're in, you're going to be ahead of the game. Um, you know, if you have an idea as to how you may or may not be supported in your local environment, knowing that in advance, um, you know, when you're trying to take action or avoid crisis is super helpful. Because you'll know, uh, can you likely count on someone giving you a hand or is it going to be tough? You're going to have to just basically adapt to struggling through a certain area you know, of your life at a certain time. But it's having this information in advance that's super helpful. Um, that's why people always come back and want more of this. But this is one of the first, one of the first times um, that I'm actually coming out and just promoting this because I know how important it is. So, uh, if you want to get the basic package with you no know, graphs and the data reports, uh, you can access that in the link below. Um, it usually takes me a couple of days after the receipt of your order to process it and get it back to you. But you'll find a purchase link below. And if you want to, you can uh, email me. I'll put my email address also in the comment section. Uh, and so I will see you soon. I hope this information was helpful. Um, I want to make sure that I've done my part to give you guys a hand. All right, Doc Stars, over and out.